we just didn't know what was going to happen. Like we didn't know if anything was coming back because some areas were just really dead. On top of that prolonged heat, we're now getting these bushfires occurring more frequently. That's what's going to knock the species out. You're going to have seeds that don't germinate because they've been cooked. You're going to have plants that don't get to maturity to actually set seed in the first place. The number three billion has been thrown around a lot, and that's native fauna that were either killed or injured or displaced by those fires in 2019. The landscape's changed forever. It will never be the same. Nature is changing, the climate's changing, and, you know, we've got to move with that. So bushfire is just changing the evolution of the Australian bush much faster than it ever has before. I hope that people looking at the artworks might think a bit about it because our children depend on it. two sites that we um, have got fixed photo monitoring points on here. Last time we were here we deployed a fauna camera as well and that's the first time we've put one in down here so we want to check, check that that's still functioning. It's not out of the question that certain things may go extinct. The Great Blue Mountains you know, is a massive system of interrelated national parks and uh, that gives it resilience under normal conditions. But if it's showing change, you can then say, well, we wouldn't think it's because of these other human impacts, it's because climate change is actually having an overlay over everything else that's happening. So we, this is uh, Wynne Jones, and he, he set up the, this site. This, this turpentine here that's got, can you see that? Well, that's this tree here. So Bill will just get over probably about a metre just in front of the metre, a metre to the yeah. right. I'll take three shots. That's what we do. Simple as that. So load that up onto our Google Drive and um, we just compare it over time. So this is a long-term project. I, you know, we've been doing this for years, I'd, I'd say. Doing these small practical things where we're being very careful and precise about how we monitor what's happening, notice what's happening, is really important. You know, like the kind of re reportage of the fires is mainly about people and properties. And the fine grain of what is happening in nature is not newsworthy. Straight through there. The majority of what I do is learning. We've seen bandicoots, you know, like 50 metres from walking tracks. It's showing um, a lot of people who don't understand things that there's more, there's, there's a lot more to things than what you realise initially. There's sort of no end to how much you can learn. Because this is that, this has been out for a whole three months. We haven't had a chance to check it at all. So who knows, there's a good chance we might have put some photos of wallabies, perhaps, maybe a possum, wire bird. When we set up the Creative Based Program, it was about how we could actually bring scientific communication more accessible to people. And it's not about dumbing down, it's about bringing complex, even language and approaches to the way that scientists work and how you can actually bring that to a broader understanding for people in the community. But we know that not everywhere is bouncing back. 
and I felt like there were ghosts of creatures. You know, I was, I felt, I really felt for the animals and the birds and, you know, and the fact like birds were falling out of the sky because there was no oxygen and where did they go, you know? And it's hard to think about, you know? I actually had nightmares about, about it. So it felt really like, I felt very concerned for what was, what was happening. You know they didn't escape. We don't know how many died. We know it was millions, but it, you know, it was terrible. Not all of our species are designed to cope with bushfire. Um, it's a very delicate balance. You've got temperature, you've got frequency. There are so many things that are in, you know, part of that bushfire regime that people don't understand. Um, there's a lot of plants, yes, that do recover from fire. There are a lot of plants that it'll kill. And those are the plants that are usually endangered. but I feel like we're being gaslighted constantly. The plants and species here have designed to cope with a fairly high range of temperatures. They get very, very cold and some quite, very, quite hot, but not prolonged hot, not the kind of prolonged hot that we've started to see. And on top of that prolonged heat, we're now getting these bushfires occurring more frequently. That's what's going to knock the species out. As flames ate trees and smoke darked days, birds fell from the breathless sky. I had this overwhelm of anger and grief um, that I wasn't unable to express at the time. This is my reflection on just my relationship with the environment and I've got some words in there about, you know, nurturing and um, caring. I, I think I needed that sort of hope. When I've been bushwalking, I've just been horrified in some areas um, to see how weeds or opportunistic vegetation has taken over areas that used to have, particularly grevilleas and hakeas, seem to take a long time coming back. But it's the plants really that, that make a landscape. Birds flying, birds falling, kin burning, kin falling. I like to think perhaps that I'm a magical realist because I like the moods of nature and that's what I like to paint. Even now, you know, so many years later, it still resonates with me, some of those stories that people told me. What I'm interested in too was the intangible and the tangible. When I went to the physical space and you could see that there was bushfire and there was burnt tree stumps, but if the trees could talk, but what would they tell me, what was behind there? What drew me to the orchids initially was how specialised some of them are. Photographically, they're, they're just phenomenal to they're so tiny and so intricate in a lot of the cases, but the minute ones, the detail of them, and when you photograph it, you can see that detail. And that's what I wanted to bring to light, was those intricate details of the inside, the workings of the, of the orchids. The thing about being creative and being an artist is that you can actually present different ways of seeing the world, you know, and ways that people may not have experienced before. It is just looking at evolution post bushfire and seeing what's happening to the landscape. We like to use our art as advocacy for the environment and to, as a way of kind of protecting and taking care of the place that we live. All of us falling. We acknowledge that our meeting today and in fact the whole project that we're working on uh, takes place on the lands of the Darug, the Gundungurra and other First Nations peoples. 
and we pay our respects to their elders past, present and future, who are the traditional custodians of the lands on which we live and work. And this is a very important uh, synthesis meeting for our project. But uh, welcome again. It's been a very exciting series of workshops so far, and I'm sure this one will be the same. It's been a funny project, you know, we were meant to be meeting each other in a series of workshops, but we've kind of bonded over Zoom and email instead. But it's actually just been fantastic. You know, we've really gotten to know each other in a completely different way. After the fires, the site had changed quite a bit and we lost our little, we had some little dots on the side of the track for us to, to indicate where to go off the track, to find the camera point. And this is Keith showing us the way. <laughs> this was the pre-fire image, so in January 2019. Then we had the fire, and that was a year later after the fire. I think it was really important that we had that connection and that we really made use of the technology to connect. You know, I think it was really important and a really important focus as well. To, to feel like you weren't alone. We're aiming to monitor the effects of climate change and that is going to take years before we actually see any real, see, um, you know, measurable data. Well, I think, you know, as some of us were sceptical, you know, during COVID about how, you know, collaborative we could be with, through Zoom, but I think that's really surprised us all about you know, we actually went quite deep and we really got to know each other. Freedom, um, did you? Yeah, just um, from the print project side, I just found that absolutely brilliant and so informative, especially in lieu of not being able to go out and join eco monitors in the, in the field recently. That was really helpful. It's been a great opportunity to work with other artists and then to have the backing of scientists and the eco monitors and to be working together, just sharing information. I think, you know, the more information is shared, the more we learn knowledge, knowledge is power. And I think for conservation and for looking after the Australian bush, I think sharing knowledge, sharing an appreciation of the beauty and the tiny, the tiny details in the bush that are just so remarkable is, is, has, got to, has got to have a happy ending. <laughs> it's inevitably going to happen again and um, that's part of why I feel that people really do need to do something. Thinking about the animals crying in the forest, the loss of all those species, it was, it was really sad. I guess people's individual responsibility is getting stronger. I think, you know, not through only this project about environmental stewardship, about people learning more about how we're part of the environment. People think we're separate from the environment, but we are part of the environment. We're part of nature. Well, I just wanted to be involved in something positive for the, for the environment. I'd like to be a part of the solution, even how small it is, you know, volunteering once a month. <laughs> Observing the, the subtlety in nature and taking that in, um, being silent and observing. Nature just speaks for itself. of the Greater Blue Mountains World Heritage Area burnt. Grief. Black, dark, black, completely black. Nothing, no colour in it, just completely black. It won't be the way it used to be.